We invite you to join us this Sunday and every Sunday morning to hear the word of our Lord as it is proclaimed at St. Mark's Lutheran Church on Alaska, Wisconsin. The of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The text for this morning is written in Luke 14, verses 12 to 15. Then said unto him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, nor thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they bid thee again, and recommence be made thee. But then when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for thou, they cannot recompense, recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And one of them that sat and ate meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat the bread in the kingdom of God. So far the text. <clears throat> when you first hear the brief text for this morning, you might easily get the impression the Lord is giving us instructions about whom to invite for a dinner or a supper. Such literalism destroys anything our Savior wants to teach us. What Jesus is talking about is basic human pride, that emotion by which one is taken up with himself, that he won't do anything for someone else, or if he does, he wants recognition for it perhaps a memorial in his honor, his name on a church window, or in a plaque. Total selfishness is, of course, impossible, this side of heaven. Our basic inner nature is too strong for that. Take the example of the text. Jesus recognizes that people ordinarily have friends and relatives or well-to-do neighbors as meal guests, and seldom, if ever, people who really need the food, like the handicapped or the hungry or the poor. The world has us pretty well conditioned to do nothing that does not benefit ourselves. The world would have us look down on or ignore people who don't think the way we want them to, and consequently we feel that we are not worthy of our friendship. There is little point, they say, in wasting our time or energy on those who only waste what we give them, or don't even say thank you. At the very least, we want people to appreciate what we do for them. By nature, no one finds it possible to live the life of mercy that God requires, to completely ignore ourselves and our relations with others, but rather to live totally in their welfare and to the glory of God. Any attempt to show mercy towards our fellow man begins with the appreciation of God's mercy toward us. Showing mercy toward our fellow man does not come naturally. Man by nature hates God and resists him and blames him for the evil in our lives, as St. Paul explains, for, for the carnal mind is the enmity against God, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Romans 8, verse 7. How much is we need the admiration of our Lord? Be ye therefore merciful. How much we need the cons constant reminder of God's infinite mercy in sending his son to redeem us and all mankind from their sins. St. Paul writes, But God commanded his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That same mercy God showed us in sending his son as our blessed redeemer is reflected in the life that is of that his son himself. Jesus did not come to earth to take highest place, a place, by the way, that is rightfully his as God's own son. Jesus' whole life was one of humility. We are reminded that each Sunday when we confess the creed that our suffering Savior was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The hymn writer Isaac Watts beautifully describes Christ's suffering when he writes, See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose such rich a crown? Jesus did not take the highest place. He took the lowest one. He did for us who could not pay him back. Everything in his ministry he did without a thought of reward. He healed a poor widow's son, not to be rewarded for it, but so that the woman would have a means of support. He healed the blind and restored the hearing of speech to the deaf and the dumb. He wasn't looking for recompense, but he was only interested in showing his mercy to the needy. When he died on the cross, he gave a portion of himself. Not a portion of himself, he gave us all. Our hope of heaven and our source of strength for our daily life depends altogether on the mercy of our Savior. The world does not understand this. They have no idea what it means to share with others without thought of recompense. And that is especially true in connection with religion. They deal with God as if he owned them, if he owed them something. For every kindness they show their fellow man, they not only expect appreciation from God, but they also expect reward. For them, this text has little meaning. But for you and me, it is a reminder of our unworthiness and leads us to pray with the publican, God be merciful to me, a sinner. 
The psalmist David expresses this with his utter simplicity when he writes, I said, Lord, be merciful to unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. God is merciful to us. He forgives our sins daily without ever a thought of us paying him back. The Lord gives and gives, as we read in the Psalms. He forgives our iniquities. He heals our diseases. He redeems our lives from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. He asks for nothing in return except for the privilege of giving some more. And what about us? We take, take, and take, and I'm afraid many times take it for granted. Just because each of us tends to think first and foremost of ourselves, Jesus urges us to use the picture of the text, to invite those to dinner who can't pay us back. Or to put it in another way, Jesus wants us to share our means and our love and our kindness, not only with the one another, but with anyone who is in need without respect of their person. He wants us to do it without a single thought of return. How is that possible? It starts with God's love towards us. Herein is love, says the Apostle John, that we loved God, that he loved us, and he sent his son to be a appropriation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also to love one another. If Jesus' unequivocal love and kindness toward you and me fails to move us to be that way towards our fellow man, then we must have our hearts of stone. The only spirit-inspired thankfulness for the mercy of God can move us to keep on giving without ever a thought of being repaid. So great is the power of the in incomprehensible love of God in the lives of his children. Christian kindness does not go without a reward. As Jesus says at the end of our text, he shall be recompensed at the resurrection. So Jesus promises to reward every act of faith at the end of time. And this reward he promises, however, is not a payback as if we earned it, but purely an expression of his grace. If we show mercy to our fellow man because we expect God to reward us, when he comes again, you're grossly abusing the promise of Jesus. Then our giving is not an act of faith, but a desire for a reward. Jesus spoke these words not that we should expect a reward, but as an encouragement that his mercy endureth forever. When one of the people at the table heard our Savior speak these words, he said, Blessed is he that shall eat the bread in the kingdom of God. Or to put it another way, how blessed is it to love in the kingdom of God of a, of a, of a Savior, where people are moved to give without thought of return where they anonymously and with an open heart share their means with those who are in need. To the words of this man, you and I say a resounding amen. We know from our own experience how blessed it is to live in a kingdom like that, where our dear Jesus gives us all things without a thought of being paid back, where he gave us the promise of forgiveness, the assurance of his abiding presence, and the hope of everlasting life. O oh Lord, give us the grace to strive to show some small way that this same safe, selfless spirit in our dealings with our fellow man. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.